Hey, salut friends. Today we are taking a look at Parrick from the Hermes Sauce collection of Hermes. This is a 2024 limited edition release. And by that I mean it's available only for a month or so at the Hermes Paris boutiques. Such as the flagship at 24 Faubourg. So really limited, composed by the Renault's perfumer Christine Nagel. To commemorate the 15th anniversary of the Sot Hermes horse competition. Now I have talked about Hermes quite a few times on the channel. Really enjoy their fragrances. In fact, it has been my favorite designer house for the past three years or so. For the most part, they have been trailblazers and don't fall into trends and such. Many of their releases have an equestrian theme based on their history as they began as leather goods manufacturers, especially with saddlery and such. This is represented in many of their products, including perfume bottles. I think they are probably the most consistent house when it comes to designers. Some of their releases are not to my liking, but they always have something interesting going on in terms of scent profile. They never come across like they lack quality. Then there is the Hermes Sauce collection launched in the 2000s by their then Inos perfumer Jean Cordelena, creating these short, poetic, artistic, minimalistic compositions. They all have this sort of orangey, mineralic, suede DNA running through them. Very soft, transparent compositions. I do enjoy them, but they have been very divisive. They also helped establish the house DNA of Hermes. However, I have to say that the latest release, Oud à Luzon, which came out just a month or so ago, was not to my liking. It was pleasant, but too obvious and generic. Like I said in my impressions video, felt like a pointless exercise and as if Hermes was trying to play catch up more than a decade of Oud craze. Speaking of which, this is the second Eau de Parfum concentration Hermes Sons composed by Christine Nagel, whose creations I have enjoyed even before Hermes, like Lalique White, Eldo Archive 69. With Hermes, Gallo is a particular favorite of mine. Also enjoyed flankers of H24, Twilly and the Merveille line. Then Cedar Hassambach and Vera Twilinka in the Hermes Sons collection. Some people really criticize her, but I think she has done a fairly good job since she took over from Elena. I like how she took the house theme of Hermes and put her own spin on it. And I think she has more to offer in the coming years. But then again, Oud Luzon was a disappointment. So though I like the theme and the story of this scent, I had to take a calculated risk with buying this one blind. So what's this about? The idea of this fragrance is to capture the atmosphere of a paddock where horses are trained and then brought out for the competition. This one specifically refers to the smell in the air of the Sode Hermes competition. So not only the horses themselves, but also the area surrounding the competition. In fact, there is a recycled hay paper that comes with the fragrance, where Nigel talks about how her encounter with a particular chestnut horse called Ryan that has won a lot of competitions and how she was inspired by the aura surrounding this horse and in general the stable, the food, the smells from the leather, woods and other items while getting the horses ready for the competition. If you are getting a sense of deja vu, then you are not alone. That's because the horse inspiration is pretty much exactly the same blurb that was published during the release of Oud Luzon. In fact, I would even say, and this is just my personal theory, I do not have any sort of insider information or anything. I think this might just be one of the ideas that was pitched for Oud Luzon before the one that was released. I will come back to that later. So how does it actually smell? When I first spray this, I get a good amount of carrot seeds in the opening. No detectable citruses or anything, which many Hermes Sons fragrances don't have. In fact, they don't even follow the traditional premier structure. The carrot seeds are creamy, powdery, slightly floral and rhizome-like. So quite a bit of rootiness and earthiness comes through. This does not go in the makeup side of things because carrot seeds are usually combined with iris, ambret, violet to create that powdery scent profile. This one goes more on the vegetal side. Reminds me of Irish Shot from Olfactive Studios to some extent. In fact, this is a reference to the carrots fed to the horses during the competition. Additionally, there is this dry, cereal-like, grain, toasty accent, kind of like the treats they feed horses. The carrot seeds are rather prominent here. They don't go away after the opening and pretty much stay till the far dry down. Then there are some sweet honeyed accents coming through, not too much. Not like the scent is dripping of dense sweet honey or something. It is more like a thin coating. 
With the honey comes a good amount of cayenne oil, which is resinous, smoky, a bit oily and tarry, setting the stage for the leather to come in later. Reminded me of Mona de Oreo's cuir at this point, which also uses cayenne oil to create the leather core. They are not the same. In fact, this is a pretty original composition, I think, and I have not smelled anything like this before. Not a lot of freshness in the scent, and also to specify, when I am saying things like dark and smoky. It is within the frame of reference of this collection, not in the Montal or Mansera kind of way. As we get to the mid, the oiliness becomes less. The carrot seed on the cereal accord opens up to a bunch of hay. Here it is pretty true to the life representation. It is green, vegetal, acrid, and musty. And by now you must be thinking this sounds nothing like a scent from Yarmes. And I had pretty much the same thoughts. In fact, I would say this has an air of indie perfumery about it. Except it's done by an accomplished perfumer at a top designer house. It will become even more evident when I talk about a particular note that they have put in here soon. It is in keeping with the DNA of this collection and the house, but also exploring this new territory. Hermes House has never done anything outrageous, for which they have been criticized by some people who are into more quirky conceptual scent profiles. They are kind of in between Chanel and Dior in terms of style, I think. You know, Chanel has this restricted palette of scent profiles like a custodian. And on the other hand, you have Dior, which is more chaotic, releasing an animalic oud and a cherry blossom in the same collection. Hermes House has conceptual creations like Paprika Brazil or Poivre Samarkand, but they are still extremely wearable. So when they did something like Bellamy Vetiver, which did not hesitate to go more robust and bold, it was refreshing and was appreciated at least by perfumistas. Since then, you might get something like Gallo, Cédre Sambac or Cuir d'Ange that have a slight edge. But then their releases mostly have been sanitized, including Velvet Wellinka and Oud Alizon. It's like they came out of their high-end atelier to this table, got down and dirty and went right back to the clean, luxury leather archives. So it's interesting to see them tackle a scent profile like this. Coming back to the scent, the dry hay and the other textured accents are smoothed out by the honey and the cade oil. The carrot seeds are still present, bringing some creaminess to the evolution. There is also this waxy, balmy quality coming through. In the blurb, they also talk about the wax used to polish the hooves of the horses. So this may be a reference to that, I think. Leather also starts coming through at this point. The transitions are bridged and balanced really well here. The leather in here follows the kid, not your Hermes floral handbag leather like Cuir d'Ange or a sweet rosy leather like Gallo or a violety leather like Velvet Wellinka. This is a more primal, bulky, horsey, tanned, earthy brown leather. Brings up the image of a horse's hooves digging through the earth. The scent has earthy, muddy accents and has this wild, open air, out in the nature quality to it. Dry, green, black, brown, earth shades of color and texture is what I'm getting. Still manages to stay as a warm experience with the scent profile overall. There is something metallic as well. It's almost like the combination of the horse with the saddle, the leather belts, the stirrups and such. And now we get to the most interesting note in the scent, which is... Oh shit! No, I'm not kidding. Nagel and Hermès talk specifically about how pleasant the croton or the manure smells and how it was used to make recycled paper. Just like cow stuff is used in many Asian countries, it seems like horse stuff has a lot of real-world applications. This note is not in your face or something, but it is animalic, again within the reference of the Hermès House collection and does have that entering a horse stable during a warm afternoon vibe going on. After a few hours, the hay becomes dry, the honey, cayenne, and the earthy notes take a back seat. The leather takes over from here. There are some jasmine, saffron, and IBQ like hints with the leather here. Now, it does not say oud here, but the combination of these rough and tumble notes, especially the oh, shit! seems to hint at something like an oud accord. All these reasons are why I think this might have been a potential idea for their oud scent, but the one that we got was a generic rose oud and they smell nothing alike. Now as we get to the far dry down, the leather is joined by this labdanum heavy amber like undertone and some nondescript modern oudiness, which I think is one of the reasons the Hermès smells so modern. 
They don't seem to throw in a boring obvious amber, sandal or cedar wood or patchouli in the base of their creations. The leather with the earthy, dry woody amber in the background is how the scent closes out. The performance is good, lasts for a long time in fact, maybe 8 hours or so, which will put this in the group of air maçons that actually have a good performance. Still it's not overpowering with the diffusion, it manages to be understated. Think it's unisex, leaning masculine, more for cold weather conditions. It is priced the same as Oud Luzon and as of now exclusive to Paris and limited. Which is a shame because I think a lot of people who are into the hobby would appreciate this scent. Not sure if it will become widely available later. But I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't because the commercial appeal is doubtful. Maybe that's why they released the scent that would become Oud Luzon. Also from my description you would have noticed that there is more going on here than the latest Hermes Sons releases which are mostly built on a couple of accords. Yes, they may have other notes in the background, but this one is more sprawling, complex and dynamic in comparison. I myself am liking this quite a bit actually. Comes across like they went back to their roots and paid homage to what made their business a success. Najel seems to have captured the heritage and being sincere and respectful to the house, which is also what Gallo was trying to do. But this just does it in a different overt fashion with the contrast of being grounded while still having that air of luxury. It's really intriguing to see how many takes on leather can Hermes do. I like how it puts you in the perspective of a cavalier, sort of in the mind space of someone with an equestrian lifestyle. It brings you into this world where you feel you want to spend all day with your horse, taking care of it, forming a relationship, going on a ride, playing around with a sense of humor and not wanting to take off those clothes because you want to continue to stay close to those memories. It is one of the standout disruptive releases from Hermes in a long time. I'm quite impressed by it and hope to enter this equestrian world more in the coming months. So there you have it, my thoughts on Paddock from Hermes. Thanks for watching, take care and ciao.